right? When we believe in Jesus Christ, He is not dead. He is a risen God. Because He is risen, He is present in our midst. Whether we are meeting live or whether we are meeting on a Zoom meeting, He is able to be in our midst. Okay? So we sing the song, praise to Him, and we thank Him. And if Jesus is here right now in, in our middle, then our prayers will be heard. He will heal us. So that's what we believe. And He will also forgive our sins. I believe in Jesus. I believe he is the Son of God. I believe he died and rose again. I believe he paid for us all. I believe he is here now. I believe that is here. To hear, with the power to hear, and the grace to forgive. I believe in you, Lord. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died and rose again. I believe you paid for us all. I believe you are here. Believe that you're here, standing in a man. You with the power to heal, the power to heal. And the grace to forgive. And I believe you are here. Believe that you're here, standing in a man. You're with the power to heal. The power to heal. And the grace. He is the only one who can forgive our sins. The Bible says that there was these four guys who brought a paralytic to Jesus and they could not get into the house where Jesus was talking. So they broke open the roof and they let down this man who was a paralyzed man completely. He can't move. And on his bed, they just lowered him to Jesus. And Jesus, instead of healing him, told him that his sins are forgiven. And the people around there, they were really confused. They said, how can anyone forgive sins except, of course, God? Only God can forgive people's sins. Their logic, their reasoning was correct, but their conclusion was wrong. They thought Jesus is not God. But the actual truth is that Jesus, being God, he could forgive sins. So there is nobody else like Jesus, no one who can forgive sins like him, nobody who, who died and paid for our sins like Jesus, right? Okay, the song says that there is none like you, no one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search everywhere, all eternity, but there is nobody like him. my heart like you do 
I could search for all eternity long and find there is no like you. No sea flows like the river so wide. Suffering children are safe in your arms. There is none like you. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. Search for all eternity long and find there is no like you. No sea flows like a river so wide. Healing comes from your hand. Suffering children are safe. There is none like you. There is none like you. Jesus, no one else can touch my heart like you do. I could search for all eternity long. So let's exalt him this evening because there is nobody else like him. His mercy knows no bounds. It's like a river so wide. It can flow and engulf anybody, any sinner. No matter what his sin he has done, if he confesses it to the Lord, the Lord can forgive him. And let's thank him for that. But the scripture says that even though my sins are as scarlet, you would wash them whitest. If I confess my sin to you, if, my, if I hand it over into your hands, you would remove it so far from me, as far as the east is from the west, and you would put it into the deepest of the oceans and no one can go and find it. Lord, cleanse us afresh this evening. We ask your forgiveness for the sins that we have committed against you, O Lord Father. When we commit sins against our brothers and sisters, we also commit the same sin against you. And you are the only one who can forgive us. Forgive us this evening and cleanse us afresh. As we study the scriptures today, cleanse us afresh, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let's turn our Bibles to the Gospel of Luke. Okay, open your Bibles to the Gospel of Luke. We are in chapter... By mistake, I wrote 14 last time. So term, today we are in the right chapter. We are in chapter 16. Right, Luke chapter 16, verses 19 to 32. I'm going to share the screen so that you guys can get a picture of that. Right, where are you? Where are you, my screen share? Where are you, my dear? Okay, shift F5. All right, so you guys can follow it in your Bible. Here goes the share screen. Ding, 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 ding. All right. Okay, so Gospel of Luke, chapter 16, verses 19 to 31. That's the end of the chapter. Okay, so we turn your Bibles to Luke, chapter 16, verses 19 to 31. Here I'm reading, follow it in your Bible. Here goes. There was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. 
And at his gate was laid a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, even the dogs came and licked his sores. The poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. And in Hades, being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in anguish in this flame. But Abraham said, Child, remember that you in your lifetime received your good things and Lazarus in life, in like manner, bad things. But now he is comforted here and you are in anguish. And besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been fixed in order that those who would pass from here to you may not be able and none may cross from there to us. And he said, then I beg you, father, to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers so that he may warn them, lest they also come into this place of torment. But Abraham said, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, no, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. All right. Very shocking. You no, know, some people call it a parable. But Jesus does not say that it's a parable. Jesus does not say that it's a story. It actually starts with, there was a rich man. Okay, Which means there might have been an actual person like this. Because Jesus has this knowledge about heaven and hell. Because he, he is from heaven. He knows what, it is, what, is, what he's talking about. So, most probably this is a real event that happened. Because none of his other parables, in none of the other parables, the, the, the name of any single person is not mentioned. You know? He never mentions the name of a person in any of the parables. So this parable, he names Lazarus. So which we understand that, you know, it could be a real person who really lived. Okay? These are all real people who actually lived. So the first thing is about a rich man. Jesus says there was a rich man, right? And what was he like? How did he live? He was clothed in purple. You know, purple was those days one of the most expensive colors. Okay, Only the royal people, only the kings and princes and people who are well off, wealthy people could afford purple. You know, something like iPhone. iPhones are very expensive and, you know, only rich people can afford it, right? The same way. You know, I'm just giving you an example of iPhone. Now everybody's got an iPhone. So let me say something more, more costly and okay, something like a Rolls Royce car. So it's a very wealthy, you know, color those days. Purple was a very wealthy color. And, you know, you, it was actually made from a dye. And you have to dip this cloth, white cloth in purple dye and take it out. The dye, that purple dye is very, very expensive. Okay. So anybody who's wearing purple, people look at them and say, oh, you're rich. Huh? Okay. So here was this man. He was dressed in purple means he was filthy rich. Okay. And he feasted every day. And then fine linen also. You know, not only clothed in purple, fine linen. Fine linen is very, very expensive again. Okay? So he's double expensive. He was wearing a dress which was purple in color, made of fine linen. That itself is very, very expensive. Third thing he did was he feasted every day. You know, in those days in Israel, the culture was like that. You know, uh, if you get a day's wages, a person who's getting daily wages cannot afford meat every day. He can't afford a feast every day. But this rich man had a feast every day. He would eat lavishly every day, more than what he could, you know, he could, it was needed for him. You know? That's the way he ate and that's the way he dressed. Okay. So our man was a very, very rich person. Okay. So think about all the rich people around you. Okay, maybe Reliance people, you know, Reliance owner Ambani, very rich. Bill Gates, very rich. Uh, Elon Musk, very rich. You know, like that. 
think about all the rich people in the world and this guy was like one of them very very rich right so here is this rich man who dressed well and he ate great food every day then talks about the next person lazarus where did he lie down how was he living he was living at the gate of the rich man okay and the bible says that he had a disease he had sores on his body okay those are painful things it actually sometimes bleeds also right you it is itchy and it bleeds so this was this lazarus you know uh, the name lazarus actually means god is my help the name lazarus means god is my help and this man you know nobody was there to help him also only the dogs helped him actually they used to lick his wounds that was actually comforting for lazarus you know sometimes we think that, oh dogs licking the wounds may be painful for this man no the dogs licking the sores would be very uh, good very comforting for the sick man okay so they were the only these animals were the only comfort that this man had plus uh, uh who desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table you know this uh, those days you know they have bread their bread is like something like kubus okay what we use uh, in shawarma and all kubus same thing like so a big bread will be you know uh, like a big kubus but what happens is you know these this rich man to wipe his hand they they eat with their hands like just like indians you know they eat with their hands they don't eat with knives and forks and all so after they eat with their hands to wipe his hands he would use one kubus okay and then he would throw it away and that would be the crumbs that fell from the table and the rich man would waste that food but that would be a blessing for the poor lazarus so lazarus would grab that food and lazarus would eat that food which falls from the table of the rich man okay forget that um, uh, that um, link over there okay matthew chapter 15 verse 11 doesn't have that story mark chapter 7 15 also doesn't have that story okay so just look at the picture right so here was lazarus he was a poor man he lay at the gate of the rich man he was covered with sores on his skin and he desired to be fell, fed with what fell from the rich man's table so he was both poor and he was a sick man okay he was poor and he was a sick man only the dogs helped him when they came and licked his sores then suddenly things get a little more darker both these people die first the poor man died lazarus died and was carried by the angels to a place called abraham's side and we see that that place is a beautiful place you know abraham's side so that's the place where people who believe in jesus christ go people who have surrendered their lives to jesus go that's the place where people who have repented of their sins go right so that is why lazarus went there so which means lazarus had repented of his sins lazarus did not go there because he was a beggar okay lazarus went there because he had a relationship with jesus christ he had repented of his sins and jesus had become his master and savior and because of that lazarus was there if you look at it in verse um, 20 30 okay same chapter verse 30 it says uh, the rich man says and he said no father abram but if someone goes to them from the dead they will repent you see so the rich man is saying those people who end up in hell they are ending up in hell because they didn't repent of their sins so lazarus if he ended up in heaven which is called abraham side here if he ended up in a good place that is because he repented of his sins okay so what is repentance repentance is turning away from your sin saying no to sin and then turning back to god okay so you are going in this direction away from god suddenly you have a realization that you are a sinner and you turn your direction towards god and you start moving towards him that is what repentance is so repentance is a change of heart and a change of direction a change of heart and a change of direction that is what repentance is so this man lazarus had true repentance he had a change of heart and a change of direction he loved jesus and jesus was his god and savior 
and because of that he ended up in abraham's side or we call it heaven what about uh, you know uh, this man rich man oh the rich man also died and he was buried see he got all the benefits here on earth he doesn't say anything about lazarus being buried okay only that angels carried him to heaven but here the rich man died and he went to a place called hades where there is torment torment means suffering torment means pain torment means heat you know all the extreme things that you can think about that is what hades is all about hades is not the final hell but hades is as good as hell you know it's a very very horrible place where god does not want anybody to go god wants everyone to repent and come to heaven but here this rich man he chose not to repent and because of that he ended up in hell which we call hades so when this rich man was in hades suddenly he saw abraham there see being a jew this man was also a descendant of abraham so he would have thought hey according to my ancestry i should be ending up in heaven if abraham is my father then i can surely get to heaven but being having abraham as your great 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 grandfather is no guarantee that you will end up in heaven your birth does not help you to get to heaven it is your choice your decision to follow christ to repent and turn to christ that will help you to get to heaven otherwise you will not get to heaven so being a jew this rich man still did not end up in heaven he ended up in hell he saw father abraham far away and he saw lazarus on his lap and lazarus being comforted and this fellow was in extreme torment so suddenly the rich man has you know is in need of water okay suddenly the rich man is in need of water and he shouts out to father abraham father abraham please help me you know if only lazarus you now he's okay right so if only lazarus can dip his finger you know in water and touch it on my tongue it will be a great relief to so he's thirsty and he's feeling extremely hot and he wants one drop of water on his tongue that would be great at this point of time that's what he's asking he's now he has become a beggar on the earth lazarus was the beggar but here now the rich man has become a beggar and he's begging father abraham to send lazarus just with a little bit of water for his tongue and then abraham tells him very shocking things first thing he says is hey one you ignored lazarus you didn't care about lazarus when he was there you didn't even see him there you know you didn't take care of lazarus there so here lazarus is being taken care of you looked after yourself very well on earth so now you have ended up in hell okay now we should understand that this man did not end up in hell for the things he did okay he ended up in hell for the things he did not do he did not help lazarus he did not see lazarus he did not share his goodness with lazarus who was a man in need see he ignored lazarus completely when he was here and god says you know you can't ignore the poor people you have to make sure that your wealth is being shared with them your blessings are being shared with them your food that god gives you is being shared with those people who are hungry if you don't do that then god is going to hold us accountable for everything that he has blessed us with see so here this rich man he he is there in hell for things that he did not do he had wealth but he never shared it he had blessings but he never blessed other people with it so because of what he did not do he is now ended up in hell and then he says not only that there is a big gap between you and us there is a big separation between you and me we can't cross over there and you can't cross over to our place so he said it is almost impossible it's almost impossible to do that okay i can't come there and you can't come here neither can lazarus come there neither can you come here you know so this is impossible there is a big gap between you and us okay now where did this gap come from now 
when he was alive on earth the rich man had nothing to do with god he had a big gap between god and him he only thought about himself himself and himself see so that gap which he had between god that will be there even after you and i die if i am far away from god here on earth that distance between god and me will always be there even in eternity okay so we carry forward that same gap that same distance with god into our after life okay so that's very very dangerous how close are we to god here and now that will decide how close we are to god after we die in eternity right so we have to be all the more careful that we are closer to god here and now lazarus was close with god here so he was close with god there the rich man was far away from god here and that distance that far away was there even in when he was in hell then suddenly for the first time this rich man is thinking about his family members he's thinking about his brothers and his father he says please send somebody to my father's house i have five brothers i don't want them to end up here see the concern he has till now he had never had any concern for any other human being but suddenly he has concern for his brothers he says none of them should have the same experience none of them should come to this hell please somehow you have to help them how can you help them abraham please send somebody send lazarus there when they see him they will know hey this guy died now he's come back what is he trying to tell us your brother he is in hell for all the wrong choices that he made he is in hell so you guys don't repeat his mistakes you guys choose jesus christ here and now you guys repent now and god will forgive your sins and you will be there in eternal heaven so he doesn't want any of his brothers to come to where he is so he's begging abraham please send lazarus back to his um, you know family so that none of them will reach there and abraham tells him an, another important truth he says hey they have moses and the prophets what does he mean moses and the prophets hey they are the old testament moses was there in the old testament the prophets were there in the old testament so when jesus was saying this the new testament had not yet been written so he was saying the old testament is there the bible is there if they don't believe the bible hey then there is no other chance even if lazarus goes from the dead nobody is going to believe if you don't believe the bible if the people don't believe what the bible says then even if you see a person come and uh, who who comes back from the dead you're not going to believe that person you see that's what abraham says and there is somebody who came back after he died and that was jesus christ and whatever he says also people don't believe see so jesus speaks more about hell than he speaks about heaven why because both these places are real places and we will end up in either of these two places for eternity either we'll end up in heaven with christ or we will end up in hell without christ the choice is for us to make here and now and this rich man made this choice here when he died he could not change his decision there in hell once there it is forever there rich man didn't want his brothers to come there so he wanted somebody to warn them and abraham says the warning is there where in the bible they have the bible with them right so the bible is going to warn them if they don't listen to that warning then they are not going to believe even if a dead guy comes back to life and tells them they are not going to believe it the the bible is enough for us to be saved reading and studying the bible is enough for us to understand what jesus has done for us reading and studying the bible is enough for us to escape from eternal hell if you put your faith in jesus christ and what he has done on the cross if you seek his forgiveness and repent of your sins surely you will never ever end up in hell that's what he says so and he said no father abraham but if someone goes to them from the dead they will repent he said to him if they do not hear moses and the prophets neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead so what do we understand from this lesson the first thing we understand is that those who have wealth those who have money those who have material possessions god wants us to share that with others those who don't have it if we have more than enough food with us share it with others who don't have food if you have clothes which you have too many 
then share it with those people who don't even have clothes to cover themselves there was this man whose name was uh, martin you know he is uh, it's a great man he was a soldier in the french army and as uh, martin was you know going for uh, uh, war one day he was dressed up in his uh, you know army suit he found a beggar on the road and that beggar didn't have a dress to cover himself up and it was freezing cold during that month in france immediately martin got out and he took all his you know outer clothing his uh, jacket and you know all those outer clothing and then he put it on the beggar and he covered him and the beggar was freezing so the martin stayed with him he hugged him and stayed with him for a long time till that man became warm and people saw this and they asked him hey that's your military dress why are you sharing with that poor man and this man said i don't need that dress i have other dresses on me i'm already warm but this man is freezing cold he doesn't even have a dress to wear so i'm clothing him you know how many dresses do we have if our almaras are full of dresses it's time that we gave out you know some of our dresses to those people who don't have dresses to wear right so what we have whatever we have if it is more in number god wants us to share it with others second thing whatever whatever benefits that we have here whatever things that we have here is a blessing after death we may not have that blessing you see so if you think that you are having an advantage here over other people that advantage will be reversed after death a people with money here will be begging there see so don't be confused with people here don't think that you know people here are all doing good those people who are wicked they may be enjoying life here but soon their their condition will be reversed after death third thing we understand is that life after death you know there are two possibilities either you will be happy eternity in heaven with god is happiness but there is also a chance that if you don't repent here and receive jesus as your savior you can end up in eternal hell and there will be suffering for ever and ever and there is no chance of you making a different decision after your death the decision has to be made today before you die death can come any time death can come tonight tomorrow day after tomorrow any time we can't expect death you know death comes suddenly so there is no chance of changing your mind changing your decision after you die so the decision whether you want to go to heaven or hell has to be made here and now finally the key to eternal life is repentance repent about your sins a change of heart and a change of direction towards god if that doesn't happen to us here if you miss the opportunity then after death you will not get the chance to change your heart or change your direction so the key to eternal happiness is repentance during this lifetime here and now today don't put it off for tomorrow let's pray heavenly father we want to thank you this evening for helping us to learn these important things from this lesson you taught us the story about this rich man who had all the benefits in the world and he refused to share it with those who were needy help us o oh lord not to be blind to 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 be unable to see those people who don't have anything help us to look around and see people who are in need of clothes who are in need of food protection shelter help us to share whatever we have whatever little we have with those who are in need help us also to understand there are two options that we can take today either we can ignore heaven and end up in hell either we can be conscious about heaven and choose to surrender our lives to jesus christ help us oh lord to choose wisely today and now because after death we will not get a chance to do that help us to make sure that we are going to be in eternal heaven with jesus help us to repent of our sins today and change our heart and change our direction now so that we may not end up like the rich man in eternal hell we pray and ask this in jesus precious name amen